and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing some awesome new products and first up we have our Lucky Clovers dies and these little clover dies are just so sweet and I love the stitching detail they have. Next up we have our Good Luck line border which is such a fun way to add a sentiment to your cards. And then here we have our Clover background stencils which is a two-step stencil that makes this beautiful background. So let's go ahead and check these out. First, we're gonna take a look at the Lucky Clovers dies, and aren't these so cute? We have some four-leaf clovers and some three-leaf clovers, and you can mix and match and layer them in lots of cute different ways. And there's so many fun ways to use these. They're obviously perfect for St. Patrick's Day, but we're gonna show you some design team samples at the end that use them in other ways. They're also really great for good luck cards too. And speaking of good luck, we've added a brand new line border, which is our good luck line border. And this is just a fun way to add a bold sentiment to a card. And Shari's going to use this in a really cute way coming up. And then here is a look at those clover background stencils. It is a two-step stencil, and I'm going to show you how to use it in two different ways. And here you can see as you layer them, the pattern that appears. This stencil can be used on both portrait and landscape cards, and I always like to start with the one that has the full clovers on it. So we're going to line that up with our card base, and in this case, we're going to be doing a one ink color technique. So this is our brand new clover ink, and it's such a pretty green. It's a bright Kelly green. And so we're going to ink that up over the stencil and just fill in all of this area. And I always love the reveal of lifting up the stencil, and look how beautiful this looks. Now we're gonna take the second stencil, and in the second stencil there's these really cool etching guides that help you line it up. So I'm gonna look through and line up those little etching lines with my clover and put my stencil in place. Now we're gonna use the exact same ink, that clover ink on top. And because this stencil layers over top of the other one, it's going to darken the edges of the other clover. It also fills in some of those cute little kind of diamond and dot shapes in the pattern, but that's okay because those will all just remain the same color. And you'll see here as we lift the stencil how beautiful that is and that was with one ink color isn't that just gorgeous I absolutely love it now this time we're gonna work with a portrait card just to see the difference and we're gonna be using two different colors of ink here so for our base piece that has the full clovers we're gonna be using some freshly cut grass ink and we're gonna ink over this whole stencil and you'll see as we lift this stencil what a beautiful pattern it's created then I'm just gonna take a dry cloth here and I'm gonna pick up all of that freshly cut grass ink just so that I'll have a nice bold clover ink over top. Then we'll take the second stencil. I'm gonna look through the stencil. It has these really great little etching lines that are helping me line up the whole thing. Then we can take our clover ink, so a different shade of green here, and this is a darker shade, and we're gonna ink up the stencil. And so this is gonna give us a little bit of a different look, and you're just gonna be wowed when you see the difference between the two. The other cool thing about using two shades of green is that you get different colored diamonds and little dots in the pattern as well. So as we lift the stencil, isn't that so pretty? I love these two colors of green together so much. It just makes the most gorgeous background. And so here you can see on the right that we used just the clover ink, and on the left we used the clover and the freshly cut grass. And wow, I mean, look at the difference between the two. I think it's so cool, and it's going to be really fun to look through your green inks and see what you have and see what kind of cool patterns you can come up with. So next up, Shari is going to take us through three gorgeous cards that are just going to blow you away. They're so stunning. So take it away, Shari. So I'm making a card with the Lucky Clover dies, but I want to start out with my background first. I'm using the yellow Spiffy Speckles paper and the Sunburst Backdrop die. So I've cut that out with that die, but I want to keep the circle in the middle. So I'm just putting a piece of tape on the back so that circle stays in place. I'm using some Wild Honey Distress Oxide ink and I'm going to darken up the edges of this to define the edges a bit more and kind of give that nice look of dark on the edges towards lighter in the center. Once I've got that looking the way I want, I'm also going to add some gold metallic watercolor splatters to this. So we're making a very I'd say St. Patrick's Day good luck card. So think rainbows, clovers, pots of gold. So those are the kind of things we're going for on this card. So I thought the gold splatters would really add to that with a little bit of shine in the background. So now this is looking the way I want. I'm going to set that aside 
and work on the clovers. So I've cut all these from some cilantro cardstock and then I'm going to decorate them a bit by doing a bunch of inking and some splattering and give them some texture. So I'm starting out with Lucky Clover Distress Ink and I'm just inking up the edges. So we have that nice light color towards the middle where the stem is and then that darker color on the outside edge. And I'm going to do that to all of these. You can see the difference between the one that's just cut from cardstock and the one that you ink. It really gives it a lot more life to do these techniques to your die cuts. So I'll do this to all of them. I started out with the largest ones. I'm going to work my way down. There's a lot of different sizes of clovers in this die set, which I think is really fun. So you could just cut a whole bunch of them and just make a bunch of cards using all these different sizes. I'm skipping ahead a little bit. You can see I've got all those clovers inked up. And then I'm gonna lay them all out and give them some texture with some green splatters. So I've just squished my ink on my craft mat here, added a little bit of water. This is oxide ink as well. And then I'm just going to tap it and give myself some green splatters. This is also that Lucky Clover ink, so it matches the inking I've already done. But because we're doing the splatters, it'll be a little bit darker and not exactly the same. It is going to be very subtle though. And then I am flicking it off the side of the block here to get really tiny splatters. I'm also going to add some white splatters to this. So the green splatters are very subtle, just kind of give a very subtle in that background of those clovers and then the white is going to stand out a little bit more. So I'm doing all of these at the same time so you get a nice even covering of your splatters across everything and then you're all ready to go when you want to put them on the card. You could do a whole bunch of these all at once and then keep them for future cards if you don't use them all on the card you're making. So I'll set those aside to dry so while those splatters dry, I'm going to move back to my background piece. I'm marking the center of each side using my centering ruler. I'm just marking that with a pencil and I'm going to be creating a rainbow down the center of this. So I have some die cut pieces here using this die. This die comes with the picket fence border die. So it layers over that fence, but it also creates a nice strip with some stitching detail down it. So I've cut all my colors and I'm just going to line up this green one right to the right side of the pencil mark. So I'm going to have three pieces to the right and three pieces to the left. So I only need to mark the center. And then once I have that first strip on there, it's easy to put a line of glue and then stack the next color right against it. So I've got cilantro as my green, peacock as my blue, and then here is the sugar plum as my purple. And that will complete the right side. And then I will start to add my warm colors to the left side of the center. So I've got sunflower cardstock for the yellow, some fake tan for the orange, and then I'm using guava for my red or my pink. And you can see that these strips are a little longer than my five and a half inch panel, so I can easily trim them off. I'm going to go ahead and put this whole panel onto my card base. And then I'll have a nice sturdy edge to trim off my rainbow pieces. So I can trim off these and now we have this really cool vertical rainbow stripe down the center of the card. So I am using the Perfectly Wicked stamp set. I stamped out the cauldron and the bubbles but I'm going to be making a pot of gold out of this. So the cauldron I'm going to color with some tea grays, some toner grays. And then for the bubbles, I'm using some dark golden yellows to make it look like a pot of gold. I'll use the cordating dies to cut these out and then I will assemble my little pot of gold by gluing the gold coins into the pot. 
I'm also going to add some more accents to this to make them look even more like shimmering gold coins. I'm using my gold watercolor paints. These are the same watercolor paints I use for my background splatters. And I'm just adding some little gold accents to these bubbles to make them look like gold coins. I'm using two different shades so we get a lot of variation and I'll add some glitter here in a little bit. I'm using Henry's ABCs to cut out some black licorice cardstock to spell out the sentiment good luck. So I'll use my grid mat to line these up nice and straight and then I'm just going to pick them up with a piece of washi tape. I'm not going to stick these down just yet, but this will hold my letters in place and make it easier to glue them down when I need to. It also makes it very easy to kind of move them around as I figure out placement of things on my card. Now we're back to the clovers that I inked and splattered earlier, and I'm going to start placing them around on either side of my rainbow, trying to figure out the best way to fill the space with these clovers. Once I've got them sort of figured out where I want them to be, I can start to glue those down. You can see that I didn't overlap the rainbow at all, but I am letting them hang off the edges of the card, which I am just going to trim that part off with some scissors. So I'm just working my way around, gluing those down, making sure they're glued down nice and flat. They're not going to go anywhere. I'm basically creating a background with these clovers. Because the focal point of this is going to be the sentiment and the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Now that all my clovers have been glued down, I can take my scissors and trim off the edges that are overhanging the side of the card. And that cleans that up really nicely and I have this really beautiful card front. So I'm taking my pot of gold, I've added some foam squares to the back of it, and I'm going to put that towards the bottom, it's at the end of the rainbow down here. And then now I can do my sentiment. So I've got good and luck, and I'm just figuring out where I kind of want it. Like I said, this tape really makes it easy to kind of move it around and shift it. I decided I wanted it a little bit higher than in the center. So I've added some liquid glue to all the letters. I can just stick that down and then carefully remove that washi tape and my letters are perfectly placed there in the center of my card. So I'm doing the same thing to the word good, adding a little bit of liquid glue and then I'll just line that up right above the word luck and carefully remove that washi tape. And now our card is almost finished. I did want to add that gold glitter to really make this pot of gold shine. So I'm adding some gold stickles to that gold at the bottom. And then I also wanted to add some shimmer to the letters. So I'm adding some black glitter stickles to each of the letters. You could have also cut these out of black glitter cardstock, but I didn't decide I wanted the glitter <laughs> till later. And then I'm also adding some stardust stickles, just some dots around to fill in where there aren't any clovers. And then here is my finished card. I really love these clovers and how they turned out with all the inking and the texture. There's a lot of texture going on in this card. Henry's ABCs makes the perfect sentiment and it's really fun to use that cauldron in a different way. So I'm going to start with my background using the clover background stencils. I have a piece of cilantro cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I will trim this down with a stitch rectangle, but for now I'm putting some removable adhesive on the back. I've got it on my media mat and I'm going to line up my stencil with the Lawn Fawn website at the bottom. So I'm just lining up my stencil where I want it on that panel and I'm going to use two colors of Distress Oxide ink to create my background. I'm starting out with a Lucky Clover. This is going to be the lighter of the two colors I use. And I'm using the Oxide ink because it sits on this colored cardstock really nicely. So I'm just going all over with that Lucky Clover, completely filling in the whole stencil and completely covering 
this entire panel. Then I'm gonna pull that stencil off. And you can see I've got some little voids in there. And then the second stencil, making sure that that logo of the website is at the bottom. And it also has some etching to help you line up your clovers. Now this one's going to color half of each of the leaves. So I'm gonna use a darker color. I'm using Distress Oxide Pine Needles. So this is a little bit darker than the Lucky Clover. It's going to make all the leaves have this really cool two-toned effect. And it's also gonna fill in some of those little stars and dots that were left out of the first stencil. So all those little elements between the clovers, you get the two colors in those as well. So again, I'm just going all over with these pine needles, Distress Oxide, completely filling this whole panel. And then when I pull this away, you're gonna see this really cool two-tone clover look. I just think this stencil is so pretty. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and then I'm gonna die cut it with the largest of the outside end stitch rectangles. So this is gonna give me a nice stitching detail around the edge and it's also gonna allow me to have a little border when I put it on a card base. So I'm gonna use the little die cut gnome for the image on my card and I've cut the solid piece out of some cardstock with some double-sided adhesive sheet on it. So I'm gonna pull that liner paper off and this really helps me build my little gnome pretty easily. So you can see I've cut it from black, that's gonna be my outline and I'm gonna put that on there first. This double-sided adhesive really just helps you put this together without having to glue these really thin, tiny pieces on there. because There is sticky on everything when you use it. Then I'm moving on to his hat. I've used some Rainforest cardstock to make him look like a little leprechaun. I'm using this shimmer green cardstock for his shirt. So I'm going to use some fog cardstock for his little mustache and his beard. So it's not quite white, but it's a really pale gray. For his little Shoes, I have some brown cardstock. And for his pants, I've used some canned pumpkin, which is that darker orange. Got some sunflower for his belt buckle. And I'm also going to use that for the rest of the belt with those little tiny pieces, just popping them in those little openings. And then for his face, I've actually cut some white and I'm gonna color it with Copics to get some variation in the color of his face and his hands because I didn't have a cardstock that I really liked for his skin tone. So I'm using some Copics and that way I can actually do some shading. And I just put that on a piece of tape to hold those pieces in while I color them. And now I can pop them off and stick them into his little hands where that adhesive is and also his face. And I did keep the little eyes from the black piece I had earlier. And I'm just gonna pop those in as well so we have that black outline where his eyes are that matches the outline around his body. And then he is all finished and ready to go on a card. I'm also using the new Good Luck Border Line Die for my sentiment. I've cut it out of some yellow cardstock as well as some black cardstock. And I'm gonna layer these together with a very slight offset so I get a little bit of a shadow. I'm starting out with the yellow. So it's gonna be a yellow shadow because I felt like the black definitely stands out a lot more on this background. And then you're just gonna get this little hint of yellow behind the black sentiment. So I'm just using my liquid glue to put a really thin layer of glue on there. And then you can easily line up that line of the die cut and shift it to the right and you get this really fun gold drop shadow behind that black sentiment. I'm just using my bone folder to make sure it's all stuck down really well. And then I can take my scissors and trim off the pieces that overhang the sides. 
So I've put some foam adhesive all over the back of this panel. My card base is made from some sticky note cardstock, so it's that yellow, but it's a lighter yellow than I've used on the sentiment. I'm gonna pop that onto that card base so we have that nice yellow border, and this is popped up a little bit from the card. And then I can add my gnome. I'm gonna put foam squares all over the back of him as well so that he's popped up off that background. And I also put together the little lantern that comes with the gnome so that he has something to hold. Then to finish off this card, I am gonna add some sparkly embellishments. I've got some gold glitter stickles, and I'm adding some dots to the background. I'm using the dots that the background stencil has already created as a guide on where to put these, so I'm just changing some of these from green to gold, but I think this gold glitter really adds to kind of the leprechaun feel that I was going for with this little gnome in his green outfit. I'm also adding some to his belt buckle, so he's got some shine and some shimmer. And then here is my finished card. I really love this background stencil. It has a really sharp look to it with those two-tone clovers. So I'm gonna make a mini slimline card using the new clover background stencils. And this is going to be a little bit longer than our stencil, but I'm going to show you a really easy way that you can extend this stencil. So I'm taking that first one that has the large openings for the clovers. I'm making sure that my Lawn Fawn logo is at the bottom. And I'm just gonna line it up on my grid mat. Now I have my piece of cardstock, this is ballet slipper cardstock cut with the mini slimline stackable. I've got that attached to my media mat with some removable adhesive and then I'm just using my magnets to hold my stencil in place. Now what you actually can't see but you'll see here in a little bit, I put some washi tape to kind of note where the corner of my stencil is on this media mat. I'm using two very light shades of pink to ink up my stencil today. I've got some spun sugar distress ink for my first color. This is going to be my lightest color. And I'm just putting a very light layer of this all over the background. I wanna create a subtle tone on tone background with the pattern so that it's not distracting from the elements that I'm going to layer on top. So I'm just working my way down towards the bottom. I'm not really too worried about inking those ones right along the edge because I'm going to take this stencil and shift it down. So once I have those inked, you can see I'm taking that, I'm shifting it down, and you can easily line up these clovers and continue the pattern on down our piece of cardstock. So I'll just use my magnets to hold that back in place. And then I will continue on with the sponge sugar for these clovers along the bottom. You can see that this color is very light, so you don't really tell much of a difference until you pull that stencil away. So now I'm going to go in with the second one, and this is where that little tape in the top corner really helps out. You can see now that I kind of put a tape there so I could remember where the corner was. It helps you line it up very quickly, but the etching on the stencil also helps you line this up. Now for this one, I'm going to use a slightly darker pink. I'm using some Peachy Keen ink. And to make sure I don't get it too dark, I am tapping this one off onto a scrap piece of cardstock before I take it to my colored cardstock. Again, I want this to be a very, very subtle pattern on the background. So I wanted to make sure I didn't get this too dark. I can take that stencil again, shift it down, line it up. It lines up really easily. And then I'll continue with that peachy keen ink all the way towards the bottom. When I pull this stencil up, you're gonna see we have this really pretty tone on tone, pale pink pattern in our background. This may be clovers, but I think that this can be used for any card any time of year. I just think it's a really pretty graphic pattern. Now I'm using the Lucky Clover dies, but I'm not gonna cut them all out of green. I'm going to use a rainbow of colors, which I think is really fun. And then my sentiment is, I'm lucky to have a friend like you from Magic Messages. 
I'm stamping this sentiment onto some speckled egg cardstock. I'm actually using some Versafine ink, which is a pigment ink that's black. And I'm going to be embossing that with some clear embossing powder. This is the perfect way to get a nice, crisp, black embossed image or sentiment. So I've stamped that down. I'm adding the clear embossing powder. And then when I heat it up, you're going to get that nice black embossed sentiment. Now the Magic Messages has a coordinating die to cut this out in a nice pretty stitched circle. So I'll use that to cut my sentiment out. And then I can start to assemble my card. So I'm going to put my background that I created onto my card base. This is three inches by six inches. And now I can finish decorating the front of my card. Now I do have the sentiment just sitting there as a placeholder so that I can see where I want to put my clovers. I did plan out ahead of time where I wanted the clovers by which size and which color. So I had an idea of the layout that I was going for. But I'm just gluing all of these directly to the card base with some liquid glue. The only thing that's going to be popped up on foam is that sentiment circle. So I'm just going to add a few more foam pieces to that so I have that circle nice and supported. And then I'll just layer this right over those clovers. To finish off, I'm using the Lawn Fawn new Sparkle Glaze Pen to add some sparkly embellishments to some of those dots. And then here is the finished card. This is just a really fun way to kind of stretch those clovers and that clover background into something that is not for St. Patrick's Day. Oh my goodness, Shari, I am in love with all of these cards. This card is so fun and so sweet to send any time of the year. This good luck is so gorgeous. I love the inking that you did, and it was so clever to use that cauldron as a pot of gold. And then this little gnome is so sweet, and that background is just so pretty. I love it so much. And next up, we have the most incredible cards by the design team. And first up, Letitia is going to blow you away with her gorgeous rainbow-colored background with the clovers. Isn't that just stunning? Elise's card is so cute. I love how she cut the clovers out of the Gotta Have Gingham paper and layered them to create her own pattern and the Henry's ABCs cut out of gold is just perfect. I love how Lynette combined the Lucky Clovers and the Good Luck Line border with the Flower Market striped paper. It's a perfect color combo that's so fun. This card here by Elena is just gorgeous. I love the inking in the background and the inking that she did on her clovers. Here, Audrey's card, oh my goodness, the gold splatters, the gold little circle, everything about it is just so beautiful. And Tammy was inspired by Care Bears to create this card, and it is so cute and sweet. I just love it. This card here by Kara is just beautiful, and she used some of the gold paste on her background to create that cool look. I love the way Yenea created a custom sentiment with your My Lucky Charm and those clovers surrounding it. It's just so beautiful. And then Grace here created a platform pop-up with the clovers, and it says, When flowers bloom, so does hope, which is just gorgeous. And she used her really cool acetate center technique, and if you haven't seen that yet, make sure to check out the intro to platform pop-up video. So we cannot wait to see what you guys do with all of these fun new products, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!